I've been waiting for a good time to cover the Sly Cooper series here on the channel, and it appears that it's the right time right now. I asked you guys on Twitter and YouTube, now that YouTube has finally graciously let me have the community tab, yay. Anyways, I pulled you lovely people on which PS3 game I should cover next, and the majority rule is that you want to see Sly Cooper 1 in a Platinum Hunters trophy guide. That's cool. Thanks to all of you for letting me know what you want to see on Platinum Hunters, and be on the lookout for more polls. Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus is the start of a quadrilogy of games still currently left on a cliffhanger, and we are definitely all hungry to get back to. This first game developed by Sucker Punch nailed it in the story, character, setting, gameplay, music, and voice acting departments all at once. I'm not even exaggerating a little bit. This game does everything very well, and is a sum of its parts kind of experience. It's also got loads of charm that take the spotlight away from its rougher edges. It oozes charm, right down to the sounds of Sly's footsteps when he's sneaking up on people. Sly 1 originally came out on the PS2, but thanks to Sanzaru Games developing the Sly Collection, we can enjoy it on the PS3, and you know what that means? Trophies. This game has them, and we're gonna stealth our way through the trophy guide, open the vault, and make off with the platinum trophy in hand, as voted by all of you wonderful trophy hunters out there. This is Platinum Hunters, the show where we take a look at everything it takes to get the platinum trophy, and whether it's worth the effort to achieve it. If you like all things Sucker Punch games, we have tons of videos already covering their games, including Infamous, Ghost of Tsushima, and now we're adding Sly Cooper to the mix. Check out some of those videos if you want those platinum trophies, and subscribe to the channel for more trophy guide videos just like this one. You might just find your next platinum trophy. This Platinum run is fairly simple, just beat the game to the end, go back and collect all the clue bottles and then open all the vaults. You will collect all the trophies if you follow that same process. It's honestly a very easy plat to collect, as the clue bottles are not too hard to find in each level. This Platinum run could have been way harder if they included trophies for the Master Thief Sprints, but instead they decided to keep them optional. Thankfully they did that because the Master Thief Sprint's times are pretty tight and the Platinum Trophy ranking would have jumped much higher. But before we spire jump into this trophy guide, note that you can collect this plat on both the PS3 and PS Vita. So this makes this our very first PS Vita game on the channel. Unfortunately, collecting this game has become more costly over time as it's become highly sought after for both aging console and handheld. You can still find it for a decent price, but you will still have to search for it. Another option, although not an entirely great one, is to play it on PS Now, which will stream the game. If you don't have a decent internet connection, forget I said anything. But hey, it's better than nothing. Until Sony decides to figure out something for backwards compatibility, these are the options. Alright, let's go world by world and see what it takes to swipe the true Thievius Raccoonus Platinum Trophy. Full spoilers are ahead by the way, you have been warned. Even before you take control of Sly, the game is giving you a trophy called Sucker Punched. You know, after 37 trophy guides, I don't think we have ever covered a trophy like this. Some games have these welcome to the game kind of trophies, and now there's no turning back. You've definitely been sucker punched. List completionists hate these gotcha plats. But once you get into the game, it all starts with a heist in Paris and some romance with a lovely fox with a shock pistol. The only way this romance could get any steamier is if you got a trophy with it. Foxy Lady is our first real trophy here in this trophy guide, and you'll get it for opening the vault in Carmelita's office and taking back the Cooper family's Master Thieving for Dummies guide, the Thievius Raccoonus.
Then, you'll get to learn the ropes when you escape Inspector Fox with the goods in hand. It's honestly a great intro and sets the tone for the rest of the game. Again, this game is filled with charm. While traversing the rooftop, you will inevitably get the coin collector trophy for picking up a single coin. I actually think this trophy is impossible to miss, although I'm sure someone out there could prove me wrong. I don't think there's enough coins in the prologue to get our next trophy, so we are moving on to our next location, World 1, the Isle of Wrath. Sir Raleigh set up shop here in this hidden Welsh island, but it's time for him to entertain some hidden guests. Now that there are way more coins at your disposal, you can get the Coin Recycler Trophy when you collect 60 coins. Then you'll get the Coins, Coins, Everywhere Trophy when you collect 99 coins, in which grabbing one more coin will give you a lucky horseshoe and allow you to take an extra hit. As well, the intro level to the first area will have clue bottles that you can collect. This will be your first opportunity to collect the Bottle Hoarder Trophy, which can be obtained by collecting all the clue bottles in a single level. These bottles are easy to find if you're just being thorough and exploring your surroundings. We'll cover an item that makes clue collecting way easier later on in the guide, so for now just find all of them in this level and open the vault located at the end of it. After almost 19 years of playing this game, I learned something new about it pertaining to the way the vault rewards work. Opening your first vault, no matter which level you open it in, is going to give you the fast attack dive move, and subsequently give you the dive bomb trophy. This is hard coded to work like this, and will be your very first Cooper power up trophy you get no matter what. There are a lot more Cooper power up trophies to cover in this run, and they all come from opening the vaults. Your ultimate goal is to open all the vaults, and that will get you the Greedy Raccoon Trophy by the end of your Platinum run. So as you play each level, collect all of the clue bottles, or if you want, just clean them up after you beat the game. It's up to you however you want to tackle this Platinum heist. Another thing I learned is that no matter which order you open the vaults in, you will get the same power-ups in the same order. The only thing that breaks the cycle is whenever you open your third vault in a world, you will get a blueprint instead of a Cooper technique. You'll need to collect all four blueprints to pop the Meeting the Ancestors trophy. These blueprints are those helpful items I mentioned earlier that our boy Bentley loads into your Binocicom, allowing you to see the location of all the missing clues in the level. Sick. This is a very helpful way to find those sneaky bottles hiding in hidden areas and preventing you from having to use an actual guide. I have the guides stashed in the description below if you're curious, but I doubt you're going to need them. So with all the thieving primer out of the way, let's rail slide through some of these trophies. I don't remember the exact order the power-ups come in, but I'm going to list them as if we were clearing the vaults as you go. The next vault trophy is called Take It Slow where you get the slow jump technique which looks really cool. You can go slow-mo in the air and make you feel like you're in a movie. Then it's the third vault so that means you will get the blueprint. Each of the four blueprints has their own individual trophies as well. So you will get the programmers can do anything trophy when you obtain this set of blueprints here in the Isle of Wrath. Then the next technique will be an upgrade to your dive attack. This will get you the Nimble Like a Thief trophy after you collect the second version of the move. Before you could only do it on the ground, but now you can use it in the air and get the jump on some of these guard schmucks. And the last power up trophy for this chapter is called Coin Sucker. After collecting the coin magnet technique from a vault, the sweet loot that's literally everywhere will come to you just by walking beside the coins. Now that you have collected all the vault trophies, Keep completing the world till it's time to pay our first boss a visit. Remember, you have to grab all the keys to be able to progress through the game. The first member of the Fiendish Five is Sir Raleigh, and it's time to smack this aristocrat around with your cane to get the trophy Frog Legs. This is probably the easiest boss in the game, which is fitting for the first boss I guess, but it only gets tough when you have to jump over his tongue like some messed up game of jump rope. This is in the last part of the fight, so don't get hit and give him the final whack. This will get you the trophy and some pages from the Thievius Raccoonus. 
There's a lot more to do now. Let's touch down in Mesa City to thwart the crime boss mugshot. The game will give you a trophy right away called Hug Gambling when you step foot into the intro level that will lead you to the casino hub world. Then we will start our vault trophies by opening the vault in that same level and swiping the top of the morning trophy. This technique is your hat mine and is fun to use on enemies that like to walk around in their own predetermined paths. A good tool for some of the later levels. You already have a technique that slows down time, now you'll get one that speeds up time. Open the vault and get the fast power up that also gives you the trophy freeze, you're it. This power up is great for speeding up the heists so you can run through the levels and beat the game faster. Now it's our third vault, which means it's blueprint time. You'll get the French Bulldog style trophy when you open the vault making out with the blueprints, which again will make things easier for you when it comes to collecting clues. Another great tool to trip up the guards is the thief replica technique, in which Sly drops a cardboard cutout of himself. When you get this technique, you'll also get the trophy, now you see me from one of the vaults. And our very last trophy in this world is waterlogged, which this technique is one of the most useful. Now when you fall into water, you won't lose a life or lose a charm, which is awesome. Remember when games had lives though? Even back in 2002, they were still in games, and it's crazy to think how much game design has changed. With all the vaults done, snatch those keys and get up to the big dog's penthouse. Time to lay the smack down and get the trophy, giving the dog a bone. Not a hard boss fight by any means, but somehow I always get tripped up by him when I revisit this game. You have to activate all these mirrors to hit him and he's coming for you packing heat. Sometimes he always calls my bluff when I try to fake him out and I end up getting hit with a stray shot. When you get to the third phase of the fight, victory is pretty much guaranteed. Hit that last mirror and take him out. That's two targets down and now we are headed to the much darker and brooding location to look for the mysterious and elusive Ms. Ruby. The putrid swamps here in Haiti hide a voodoo priestess, which also has some pages of the Thievius Raccoonus, so we need to take her down. You will get the Bayou Lily trophy when you hop out of the van and set foot in the first level just like the last world. Then the only vault trophy you need to worry about in this world other than the blueprints is the slow stacker trophy for finding the upgrade to your slow effect that lets you use it at any time instead of just in the air. Immediately you will also get the time stopper trophy for having found both versions of the slow effect. We got a 2 for 1 special here on trophies. Then of course we got our blueprints trophy, Singing Gator, which will pop up on the third vault. Do remember to collect all the vaults though as you go, and obviously the keys so we can make our way to Ms. Ruby's lair. Now we can fight her and get the Dance Dance Ruby trophy, but this isn't a traditional fight. It starts off that way as you give her the first whack of your cane, but then for the rest of the fight, this stealth action platformer turns into a rhythm game. Now you have to watch out as the sacred symbols come at you, and you have to press the right button on the controller at the right time to dodge them. This is my favorite fight in the game as the song is kind of infectious, and this boss fight is super unique. In my opinion, this is also the toughest fight in the game, as you have to get the timing just right through three phases of the fight, and missing one and dying will send you right to the very beginning. The game will eventually take pity on you, giving you charms, but you still have to make it all the way to the end and give Ms. Ruby that last smack. Once you get it down and shut down this Voodoo Alligator's operations, you will get the Dance Dance Ruby trophy. As well, you will get the Run Like an Egyptian trophy for learning your first shadow technique from the Thievius Raccoonus pages she had. And this technique is awesome because it lets you just completely disappear and we're gonna need it for our next location. Our next stop on the journey takes us up the frigid mountains of China to track down the frustrated fireworks artist turned homicidal pyromaniac the Panda King. Right away we are going to upgrade that fancy new shadow technique you just got and then open our first vault. The trophy is called Sly Tutankhamen Approves and the upgrade will let you move using your shadow ability. 
This will immediately pop the complete darkness trophy for having both shadow techniques in our grasp. Then our second vault trophy is called Spike Suck, which will make you immune to fall damage similar to the technique where you won't take damage from water. This practically makes you invincible aside from the enemies, but you can take them out pretty easily. Then we get our last blueprint trophy called Snowy Blueprints. When you open the third vault and that will net you the Meeting the Ancestors trophy we mentioned earlier in the guide for grabbing all four of the blueprints. So if you've collected all the vaults one by one, now you are poised to open your very last vault for the Greedy Raccoon Trophy. So grab the clues, walk up to the vault, and... What? What do you mean we can't open it yet? Owl dialect? Son of... Ugh. Fine. We will come back to this one after we beat the game. Seriously, you have to beat the game before you can open this last vault. So off we go to fight the Panda King for the trophy, Pandas Aren't Always Cute. And I love this fight because I can just swing my cane around like a rage-filled crying and screaming person. You just have to dodge his attacks that he telegraphs to you from a mile away. Seriously, I can do this fight without taking a single hit and it's very easy. Once you put him down and end his fireworks operation, you will ignite the trophy and we will only have one more world to visit and one more member of the Fiendish Five to take down. The ominous and shadowy clockwork. But before we start this last heist in the fiery Krakara volcano, let me know you're geared up and ready to go by hitting the like button. It lets me know you're still here and it also makes the shadowy owl in the background called YouTube happy. I hope they don't hear I just said that. Anyways, now we have the intel that Clockwork is hanging out in a dormant volcano and we have to go and fuck him up. This world is completely different from the other four as it's just a series of levels with no hub world, no keys, no clues, and no vaults. Our mission is just to make it through the seven different levels in which Clockwork is the last boss in the seventh level. Time to go for the oh no he didn't trophy and end this family feud. The Ms. Ruby fight is tricky because it's a rhythm mini game, and this clockwork fight is tricky because of the jetpack controls. Do yourself a favor and go into the option menu and switch the inverted flight controls. I don't know why inverted flight controls were a thing back then, but I'm glad it's almost been phased out. But back to the fight. The hardest part of this fight is flying through these rings because if you don't go through them, there is no way to dodge them. This is honestly a great fight even with the jetpack because you really feel the animosity and motivations of clockwork. This owl is the purest form of hatred and jealousy, so it's time to end his perils by putting him out of commission. When you land the final death blow on the mechanical bird, you can get not one, but two trophies. First, you'll get the oh no he didn't trophy, just as we mentioned earlier, for defeating clockwork, and then after that you'll get the clash of the clockwork trophy in which the description says track down clockwork. Not sure what the difference is, but hell, we'll take the two for one. After you've rolled credits, don't forget to head back to the very last vault that we couldn't open before, because now it's time to open it. Bentley can decipher the code, so all you gotta do is press the circle button, roll that code, and take your very last Cooper Family Ancestral Technique, and finally pop the Greedy Raccoon Trophy. You have reassembled your family's thieving manual, the Thievius Raccoonus, and finally Sly's own perils with your loyal gang, Bentley and Murray at your side, can be put to rest. And the trophy run is done here. So if you've collected every clue bottle, opened every vault, defeated every member of the Fiendish Five, and collected every trophy, congratulations! You'll be awarded the True Thievius Raccoonus Platinum Trophy for Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus HD. Overall, the Platinum Trophy run is a technicality to playing a wonderful stealth action platform with so much heart to the very end. But I'm super happy that the game did get this HD version in the Sly Collection, and that it has trophies. 
I want to look at my trophy case and be happy by the fact that it's in there with the Platinum Trophy next to the Sly Cooper name. Sly 2 is next for the collection and I'm very, very excited to get to that one. The jump from this game to that one is almost jarring with how different they are. But Sly 1 is still a super charming game after all this time and it's a must play game. I wish it wasn't stranded on the PS3 and Vita because not everyone has access to those consoles. But if you can find a way to play it, do it. You will have a wonderful time and you will be learning a lot of great thieving techniques that you can use on your friends and family. Don't try any of the dive moves, please. And don't try walking on electrical cables, you know what? Forget I said anything. Chill fam, just keep it in the game. That's it for this video. I'm sure you've noticed by now, but I'm feeling a little bit under the weather and my voice isn't exactly as booming and chipper as it normally is, but the show must go on. So I put on an episode for you. Slap that like button just based on that fact that even when I'm sick, I'm still giving you a trophy guide and definitely subscribe for more videos coming down the pipeline like Sly 2 and the other games that were also on that poll because I definitely want to do those as well. I hope all your trophy guide hunting expeditions go very, very, very successfully and peace out.